Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. We're two Canadians living on our 39-foot mainship trawler starting an adventure of a lifetime. We invite you to follow along as we travel 6,000 miles through Canadian and U.S. waterways around America's Great Loop. We bought our mainship 390 trawler in 2019 in preparation for this Great Loop trip and during the last couple of years when everything was shut down, we were able to make some upgrades and we're very excited to show you our boat. The mainship trawler is a very common boat that people use to do the Great Loop. With a high bow, she cuts through the water easily and travels well at trawler speed, about 7 or 8 knots. She can travel a maximum speed of 14 knots, but is most efficient at 7 knots. When you approach the boat, you enter via the cockpit and step down 3 steps. The cockpit is an important part of this boat. It allows easy access around each side, onto the swim platform, up to the flybridge and into the salon. There's also canvas covers with bug screens for protection all around the cockpit as well as through the flybridge. And this allows for extended living space. The back gate opens directly onto the swim platform for easy access to the dinghy or for swimming. There is a large patio door with a screen at the back of the salon allowing good airflow. And as you enter the salon, you can see a lot of storage, the galley on the left, the lower helm on the right, and a sitting area or salon in the rear. The salon includes an adjustable table for eating. The lower helm is well appointed with a GPS, VHF radio, AIS, and there is an easy access door out to the starboard side. The galley or kitchen has a full fridge freezer, large sink with filtered drinking water, propane oven and cooktop, microwave oven, toaster oven, and a portable induction cooktop. The engine room below has a single Yanmar diesel engine, and this boat has both bow and stern thrusters. There are lots of grab rails on the boat, on the ceiling, at each stairway, and around the exterior to help keep your balance when the boat is in motion. Moving forward to the bow of the boat, down four steps, we enter the master stateroom, which has a queen-size bed, porthole windows on each side with rain guards, as well as a hatch overhead with a bug screen. In addition, it has storage on each side, both shelves and hanging lockers. There is also storage under the bed. On the starboard side, there's the head, which is our bathroom, with a toilet, sink, and a walk-in shower. It has its own hatch and porthole window. We replaced the original mirror with this medicine cabinet and LED lighting for more functional storage. There are some thoughtful storage cabinets with sliding doors like this one. It also has a separate walk-in shower with a folding door, a sitting bench, and is a quite a generous size for a boat. On the port side, we have a guest stateroom with two small beds, and most of the time people use this space for extra storage, and you can see we do that as well. This is where we normally hang our towels on rainy days. Space is a premium on a boat, and we even have a little extra storage under these stairs. Going up to the flybridge, there are some wide, safe stairs with several grab rails, which make it easier to go up and down while the boat is in motion. The flybridge is where we pilot the boat almost all of the time. It's much easier to see from this vantage point for driving distances or even for maneuvering. This is a very comfortable space with two large benches on each side, a table that folds out, and additional space behind, where we've added some furniture and we get some pretty great views from up here. We really like that both the stairs and the flybridge offer covered protection.
We remove the original mast and replace it with a solar panel roof. At the rear, we have our anchor light, HD television antenna, floodlight, and camera, and we also have our Garmin radar. This fold-out table makes it ideal for us to eat up here on a regular basis, as well as entertain family and friends. We like the flexibility of having a portable barbecue and all of the additional storage under the benches for things like extra life jackets. We also have a small propane tank, which feeds directly into the cooktop and oven in the galley. And now back down for a tour around the exterior. Going around the starboard side, you can see we have fairly easy access with nice high railings, so it feels pretty safe if you're in rough seas. There is easy access through this door to the lower helm. And then continuing on towards the bow, you can see our fender storage there, the porthole windows. And this is our anchor locker and the anchor windlass system, which we use to lift the Rockna anchor up and down. It's very heavy. Looking back towards the boat, you can see the three hatches, the front window sun covers, and up to the flybridge to have visibility with the captain. Proceeding around the port side of the boat, everything is the same as the starboard side, except there's no side door. And this passageway goes directly back aft towards the cockpit. We added these porthole rain guard covers, and they are invaluable in inclement weather. Going out towards the swim platform, you can see our dinghy davit system. It's an H3O, and it works quite well with a manual winch. I think you can get an option for an electric winch. And here, you can see Malcolm using it to bring our dinghy back up on the back of the boat. Exploring by boat is lots of fun, but one of the most important aspects is safety, and it means protecting the boat as well as ourselves and other boaters. We have three fire extinguishers on board located front, mid, and aft, as well as a boat hook to assist with locking. There are also three carbon monoxide detectors and two smoke detectors. Our personal PFDs, which we wear at all times when en route, and extra PFDs for our guests. Throw rings with floating ropes are for man overboard. We use these communication devices to talk to each other when moving near a dock. It saves us shouting when we're in a difficult situation. It's important to log every trip we make. And in case there's any disastrous situation and we have to abandon the boat, we have all of our essentials in a dry bag to take with us at a moment's notice. In addition to that, we have a first aid kit, more throw ropes, and even an AED. You never know what kind of situation you'll find yourself in or how close you'll be to medical care, so it's important to have at least basic first aid supplies on board. And we have it easily accessible. We highly recommend taking a CPR course and having flares on board, especially if out of a radio or cell service area. Essential boating equipment includes VHF radio, AIS, and GPS maps from multiple sources for boating in unknown waters. The VHF radio is used to contact other boaters, marinas, and when necessary, the Coast Guard. It's essential to continually monitor the Coast Guard Channel 16 while en route.